Hello, everybody. Dr. Lonnie Stewart here from the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Are you a physical therapy student about to start studying for the National Physical Therapy Examination? Or maybe you're a professor, a program director, or a clinical instructor who teaches DPT students preparing for the NPTE? Either way, we would recommend checking out our sponsor, NPTE Final Frontier, and the community they've built around preparing for and succeeding on the NPTE. That exam and the preparation that goes along with it can be long, tedious, difficult, and stress-inducing, but it doesn't have to be. NPTE Final Frontier has the tactics and resources to help address all of the usual barriers. They even have scholarships to help with NPTE study courses, FSBPT registration fees, and even research opportunities. And if that's not enough, they're even donating to the very first annual HET Podcast Scholarship to be awarded at the end of every year. Go to NPTEFF.com for all of the details and use code HET for 10% off all purchases. Links to both the NPTE Final Frontier and their scholarship options are available in the show notes. And now, let's get ready to learn. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Teach Me Something Tuesday episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. F. Scott Field, and today is a lesson called Activate Active Learning. The old days of sage on a stage, somebody getting up to the podium and lecturing for an entire hour or two or three are gone. Those don't seem to work, at least not for me. Uh, I don't know many professors that would say that it still works for them, but active learning is not easy. It's a lot of work. I've had a couple of really good tips and tricks and pointers that I've used in my years uh, lecturing. The first one is really just to find out what your students already know and what they don't know. Because if you're going to do active learning, you're going to have to be really engaged in discussion. And in order to lead a discussion and keep people really engaged and keep the discussion moving forward, you're going to have to kind of build the bridge between what your students don't know and what they do know and how to kind of interrelate the two to make sure that they're making progress and moving forward and obtaining knowledge, right? That the knowledge is being transferred from you to them. You also have to be willing to experiment. If one question doesn't land and it's just not going anywhere, don't be afraid to pivot real quick and get off it and find a different question. Over time, I feel like you'll find questions that tend to work and ones that tend not to. And that may be different from class to class, year to year. But for the most part, you can find some really good questions and start with those. Have maybe a, a list of a couple of questions that you always pick for that one topic, and maybe questions to avoid. Another one is to keep learning, always be learning, right? Uh, it's one of those things where we say we're lifelong learners, we have to live it too. We have to show that we too like to learn and continue to learn. Part of that can be evidence-based learning, meaning we're reading up on new research and seeing what's out there and what's working. Uh, some of it's practice too, right? We have to get out there and get our hands dirty, roll our sleeves up. Um, I like to try to keep at least one foot in the boat of a clinical practice. I don't want to completely give that up. Um, but you really have to show your students that you too are a lifelong learner. And one of the things uh, you, you've heard the cliche phrase, actions speak louder than words, right? Well, in, in academia, I've heard this several times over now that what you do speaks so loud, I can't hear what you say, right? And that's just another take on the actions speak louder than words. What you're doing needs to be in the forefront so that people learn from you they take your leadership and they run with it. They see what you're doing and they try to emulate that. They try to be you. They try to do what you're doing. They try to you know, see what you're up to and how they can be a part of it and do it as well. And then last but not least, the one tip that's kind of helped me a lot is to try to help your students feel competent little by little as you go, right? So it starts with just seeing what they know, filling in the holes and the gaps. And then as the semester progresses, as things move on, Really make sure that they're using the prior knowledge as building blocks and they're getting better and better and better and learning as they go. And one of the ways to kind of do that is to make yourself accessible, right? You want to create a safe place. We've talked about this time and time again, but your classroom should be a safe place for students to make mistakes and, and to grow from them and learn from them, but also be accessible outside of class, right? Your office hours or just any other time that uh, students may feel that they need some extra help or have questions they want to go over. I used to have an English teacher back at Wake Forest who would have his class over to his house for tea 
uh, once every semester. Uh, he was a little tiny old British man. He was a uh, brilliant, brilliant mind. And his classes, uh, you know, they only range from about 10 to 15. If, it felt, if he felt like it would be too many people, he'd split the class in two. But uh, I think we had about 12 people in our class and it was awesome. It was great. Uh, and I learned so much and we had such a good discussion. It was really one of those things that I, I I cherished it to this day because it was such a great experience. Again, welcoming us into his home, having tea, having uh, biscuits, I guess he called them. They were cookies, right? Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just a great learning experience. And that was him making himself accessible to us, which made the learning experience that much more deep and, and more enriching. So I love that. But Try those tips and tricks when you're really, you know, trying to figure out how to activate active learning. Hope that was helpful and we will see you on the next one. Well, I hope that episode was entertaining as much as it was informational and educational. If you enjoyed this episode or any of our past episodes, we ask you to please subscribe to the podcast and leave us a rating and review. And please share out the episodes to those who you feel may be able to benefit from them. We also urge you to follow us on all social media platforms at HET Podcast and let us know what topics or experts you would like to hear from in future episodes. And just as a reminder, none of the information on today's show should be considered medical advice. It's simply infotainment or edutainment to help educate our audience. For medical advice, we always advise you to reach out to your preferred medical professionals, and we'll see you on the next show.